accident four years ago. A woman made a U-turn into the bike I was on, hit the back of the passenger side, driver of the bike went through the car, broke his leg. I went over the woman's SUV, broke my back at T4, T7, ribs punctured my lungs, nicked my spinal cord, coded twice, was resuscitated, and I have a TBI. So to say I'm lucky to be alive is an understatement. So I started as a T4 complete injury. I went the first two years of my injury with this. I was in a clinical study with a trial called Invigo. It was a neuroscaffold. It was a tiny device they put in my spinal cord when they fused my spine. The idea is to reconnect the disconnect. I didn't meet any of the markers. The other patients did, and I never saw anything. So I was pumped to be a wheelchair user the rest of my life. About two years into my injury, I started regaining sensation and movement. And so now I have tons of hip control. I actually started in this brace and now I'm to the KFOs and I'm to a place where I can stand a little bit to pull my pants up. I just have to stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down. But I'm, I'm getting there. So I went from a complete injury to an incomplete injury. Very uncommon, but not something that's impossible. Uh, very grateful. I regained bowel control three and a half years into my injury. So I went three and a half years without that and got the ability to push back. Um, so it's been a very incredible journey. I'm a motivational speaker. I have a nonprofit called Wheel With Me Foundation dedicated to building a transitional facility for spinal cord injury survivors. No offense to you guys, but you don't understand what it's like to be a wheelchair user or how to overcome obstacles in the community. That's where we come in. I also am a full-time student. I am right now working on my associates with a goal of working towards pre-med for neurology. And I work part-time and I've done 10 Tough Mudders, so I'm an adaptive athlete. I've done World's Toughest Mudder twice, which is their 24-hour obstacle course race, all from a chair. I have a team of people to help me through. I am trying out for Team USA and wheelchair curling next in two weeks. So I, uh, I have a lot on my plate, but uh, I'm just here to show that there, there's no obstacles that we can't overcome. Just because we use a wheelchair doesn't mean that we can't do anything we set our minds to. I drove across the country twice. I've competed in numerous adaptive sports, water skiing, snow skiing, a rock climb in Colorado. I've done a lot. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm here to just show you guys a couple things. I do floor transfers, I do regular transfers. I can walk in my braces. I don't walk with crutches yet, but I'm willing to try. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so. Can you tell where you started transfer wise? Oh my gosh, I had a slide board and I would cry. Let <laughs> me <laughs> tell you about the first month in outpatient therapy. <laughs> Ryan, will you please put my chair in the car for me? I, I can't do it. I can't get it over. And so at the time, I have a sports chair now. My chair actually has suspension on it, so I can take it to the skate park. Um, I used to have a tie light and a quickie, which was a lot lighter. This chair is 26 pounds. My tie light was probably 20. Um, my quickie is about 22. So it's a little bit heavier, um, and I still, I struggled with everything. Because again, I had no core strength at all. So T4, nipples down. I had nothing the first two years of my injury. I couldn't put my hands on my head, couldn't brush my teeth without holding onto the counter, couldn't brush my hair without holding onto the counter. So getting core strength back has completely improved my quality of life. And what I did was I changed my diet and I started exercising. So if you give that to your patients in the beginning and say, hey, if you take care of your body, your quality of life will improve. You don't have to tell them they'll ever get anything back because you know we never know that. But you tell them that their quality of life will improve, you feel better, you have more energy, you're more willing to do things, you're stronger. The biggest thing is getting yourself off the floor. I fell in my chair two to three times a week and I would have to wait sometimes four hours for somebody to come home and get me back into my chair. And so learning the floor transfer, it took me two years, but finally getting that changed my quality of life. And so that's what your goal is, is to improve your patient's quality of life at the end of the day. Right? Yeah. What else? <laughs> I've got a question. Um, I'm one of the professors. I let them in the elevator. I'm Dr. Grant. Yeah. Um, who introduced you to like the healthy nutrition and diet or did you find that out on your own? So we have a doctor at Carolina's Rehab. His name is Jesse Lieberman and he is an incredible human being and did a trial about nutrition. And I took his nutrition course, learned the correct calories to take in, and then I met 
somebody local to Mooresville, she does adaptive CrossFit for free and trains adaptive athletes. And so I added that into my life and she started building fitness programs for me. She a professor. Uh, yeah, her name's Amanda Clay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, awesome. she, Amanda trains me. Right? I still train with her regularly. And so she actually gave me a program to go by, and I do that on my own now. But the thing is, the possibilities are endless. People love wheelchair users. They love that they're inspirational. So you in, encourage them to go to their local gyms and talk to them about the, the fee, the monthly fee. I did that with my why. I said, you know, I'm on disability. I'm a student. I'm trying to do these things. This helps my recovery and this helps my quality of life, is there any way to reduce the monthly fee? And they did for me. So it's totally, there's no excuse to not be healthy and take care of yourself, especially as a wheelchair user. It's critical because we are so prone to so many things, pressure sores, infections. Just being healthy, I had a UTI, I changed catheters, and I use what's called a low-free catheter. It's clinically proven to reduce UTIs. It has a salt solution in it. I switched that catheter and switched my diet had a UTI since in over two years, which is huge for a wheelchair user or a spinal cord injury survivor. So it's definitely like, I think that is the key piece to recovery to a full independent life is taking, putting the pressure on to, hey, take care of yourself. That's another example of advocacy. Right. Like she self advocated for herself. Oh yeah, 100%. Yeah. Because the thing is every spinal cord injury is different. You are not gonna have uh, two T4 injuries that are the same ever. Even when I was first injured, I was way different from my friends. And so it was like, you never see two of the same injuries, so you have to advocate for yourself because people want to group you in, well, you're a T4 injury, so you only you can do this, this, and this, and you'll get autonomic dysreflexia, and you'll get this and this, and like, no. That's not the way it works. <laughs> I know, I, you may have went to, you know, years of med school, but my this is my body this is what i live with and the more encouraged people the more that they get into their injury the more they'll learn their body when you're first injured when my first year and a half two years i never knew when i need to go to the bathroom so i would just let my bladder fill up and then it was sad and now i'm paying for that now but now i know when i need to go to the bathroom as well so you learn the feelings because our sensation is different we still and there's a misconception that we don't feel our legs a lot of times we do. We have nerve pain. We have d different uh, skeletal pain. It's like a soreness, or if someone hits your leg hard, you like you feel the bone almost. Is the way like I can't. Uh, when you go to the dentist and they numb your face and it comes back and you kind of feel it and you don't. That's how my legs feel, and that's how they always felt. It's like I know they're there, but I don't type of thing. And so there's this huge misconception that you know we don't deal with the pain below our level of injury when in reality we do. So it's just very important to have compassion and listen, listen to what we're saying because we're telling you these things for a reason. Like, this is what I'm feeling. Don't write it off as, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Like, just be encouraging and compassionate towards people. How long was your like hospital stay versus did you do inpatient and then like outpatient? And do you still have like check-ins? Um, so I, was in Caroline's Medical Center for three weeks, and I was trached, pegged, tubed. Um, I was initially fused from T2 to L4 or L2, something like that. Uh, and then I went to Caroline's rehab for three weeks. I went home for a week, got C. diff, got put back in the hospital for a week, and then back into inpatient rehab for another three, because the C. diff wiped my strength and everything I learned. So I had to start all over again. Then I did outpatient for the rest of that year, so I think nine months, and my insurance stopped covering it, so I stopped going, but when I need help, I text him and Allie. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, I need help, or hey, how's this look? Just to check in to make sure that I'm, I'm still doing the right things, because I do walk so much on my own, um, but I don't, I haven't been to PT in a very long time, because insurance doesn't cover it, and it's expensive. Yeah. And that's why you'll see a lot of people, they won't, go because insurance a lot of times doesn't cover the things you need. I uh, I found a standing frame and a support group, so I lost 0.4 whatever of my bone density. I'm still in the normal range, but in two years I lost that much bone density, and it kind of scared me because I'm like, wow, in another two years if I lose that, I'm in osteoporosis stage, and I'm too active for this. So I bought a standing frame, and I stand in that probably four or so hours a day because I do my schoolwork from it and I work from home. So. It's just very important to encourage 
Even though these don't work, take care of them. I use electric stimulation, so I wear something called wearable therapy. My cards are on that table if you guys wanna check it out. I share how to do laundry, car transfer, everything on YouTube. Um, but one thing I shared was Axiobonics wearable therapy. They're electric stimulation shorts, similar to the FES bike, but I sleep in them. And so I have a ton of muscle mass on my legs. I've been paralyzed for four years and have very little atrophy because of that. So that's like, I just, it's so, I, I stress it in support groups and everything, and I can't have you guys stress enough, take care of the lower limbs because they're still there, they're still attached to you, they're still circulating, <laughs> like, it's kind of important. And once you lose that bone density, it, it changes your quality of life. You're so limited on what you can do. Anyway, do you guys have any questions? <laughs> Like, I'm an open book. I literally, I post pictures of me. And I wear, so I lost 20 pounds. And when I changed my diet and everything, I lost 20 pounds. So imagine me at like 155, almost 160 pounds. I gained that in my first year of injury. So I just thought, oh, I'm in this clinical trial. I'll recover and then my belly will go away. No, it's not what So, <laughs> so I, um, that, that changed my quality of life. Because it's, you guys think I'm transferring all that weight, I'm pushing that weight. Um, I So after I lost that weight, I was able to fit in children's pull-ups rather than the pens. And so I posted a picture on social media to let young women and all people that need pull-ups, like, hey, it's okay, you don't have to be embarrassed about these things out of your control. If I have diarrhea, I post that on social media. I'm like, because a, a lot of people think that I can't, I just can't walk. They're like, oh, you just use a wheelchair. I'm like, hey, I use catheters and I pee myself quite often. I I have bowel accidents all the time. If I'm sick, it's game over. I'm staying home because I know that I'm going to take four showers today. Like, it's, it's just so important to bring awareness to the things that aren't talked about and make, make them feel that it's okay. Hey, you don't have to worry about having an accident while you're here with me. It's okay. We'll handle it. Um, one thing that a lot of people encourage is keeping, like, an emergency kit in your office with like wipes, a, a pair of scrub pants or something, just in case someone has an accident. You have the stuff there to say, hey, it's okay, and make them comfortable. The biggest thing is making people feel comfortable within this new normal, because you're gonna, so many of you are gonna be touching them when they're first injured, and it's so important to say, this is normal for your life now, and it's okay. You don't have to be embarrassed about these things that are out of your control. You are the support system. I. If I didn't have, like I had her, I had him. <laughs> she was with me an inpatient, he was with me an outpatient, and I can't describe the amount of support when I would come in crying. I could, so many times, I would just be so mad at the fact that I'm like, holy crap, I'm 22 years old and I'm paralyzed. And I'd just be so upset, he's like, it's okay, just let it out. And like, he would let me work through it, and then we would work through it with therapy. And so it's very important to be supportive and compassionate.